we have another speaker from, again from UK. Welcome Dr. Pankaj Agarwal. He will be speaking on role of cataract surgery in glaucoma. Thank Welcome. you very much, Dr. Mathur, and thank you very much for the area for inviting. Excellent session so far. Uh, so my talk is on the role of cataract surgery in glaucoma. I have no financial interest uh, with regard to this talk, uh, but I will have some disclosure that I don't do refractive surgery. I do a lot of cataract surgery and I'm still a trabeculectomy surgeon, although I have done all the mix, but I still believe in trabeculectomy strongly. Uh, so I will be highlighting some of the issues regarding the cataract surgery in glaucoma. First, the efficacy of it, then some effect on the diagnostic, some therapeutic consideration when you land up in patient with angle closure, pseudoexfoliation, glaucoma, uh, how can we look into cataract surgery mixed with other procedures, and some small tips on uh, cataract surgery in glaucoma patient, mainly the advanced and uncontrolled glaucoma. So every one of you perhaps are aware of this landmark trial published in Lancet looking into the effect of early lens extraction compared to peripheral iridotomy in PACG and PAC. And this study, uh, one of, we, we were part of it as well, and I think it changed my practice, how I manage angle closure patient. Uh, the study shows not only is much more efficacious compared to peripheral iridotomy, but is improved the patient quality of life, uh, is cost effective and safer. Uh, look into the chronic angle closure and how it compares the lens extraction with trabeculectomy. And this study from Dennis Lamb, we showed, yes, trabeculectomy did help to reduce the number of drops, but it came with 10 times more risk of complications. Now we go into the acute angle closure. Hot eyes, and really, you don't want to do a trabeculectomy when the eye is so hot. Now this study from Dennis Lamb group compared early phacoemulsification with peripheral iridotomy to look into the efficacy in the management of acute angle closure. And no, no surprises, this showed that the early lens extraction not only was much more efficacious in reducing the intraocular pressure, but the angles were much more open for a longer duration and in, in fact, in patient with, uh, most of these patients are elderly with cataract, and the early lens extraction was a definitive management in most of these patients. And that's what I see in my clinical practice as well, that most of these patients don't need any further glaucoma surgery, and they manage very well on their drops. There's some more evidence suggesting that if you do early lens extraction, just as soon as you can break the acute episode, uh, it's much more effective uh, in the longer term. Now let's look into the open angle glaucoma. We are very much aware of the angle closure. In open angle glaucoma, this is not new. For more than 50 years, there has been evidence to show that there is reduction of intraocular pressure after a routine cataract surgery in any glaucoma patient. And there are lots of publication. But this landmark trial, Oates trial, showed that there is a significant reduction in the intraocular pressure after a routine cataract surgery, and the effect was sustained for more than three years. The, uh, the preoperative intraocular pressure was a strong predictor of postoperative reduction. So the higher the intraocular pressure, the greater the magnitude of IOP reduction following surgery and to the extent of seven, uh, six to seven millimeters. Now, we look into the cataract surgery and pseudoexfoliation. For some reason, uh, where I am practicing in Edinburgh and there are a lot of pseudoexfoliation, and that's what I see in my practice, that the effect on the intraocular pressure is much higher in not only the eye with the pseudo exfoliation, but in the contralateral eye. One of the more important finding is that the pseudo exfoliation eye with a history of prior laser or a trabeculectomy or any glaucoma filtering surgery may not have as great an effect as no prior laser or surgery, which again indicate that uh, you may want to do the cataract surgery earlier and perhaps before you do any laser or surgery. Again, we are aware that these cataract surgeries are not easy in the pseudo exfoliation, comes with a higher risk, but the risk won't get any better by delaying the cataract surgery. So again, that is something to think about. The drop in the intraocular pressure is sustained for much longer than the open angle glaucoma. Now let's look into the mechanism of reduction of intraocular pressure. We know that the pressure gets better, but what's the mechanism? Mechanism is much, much more clearly defined in angle closure. It relieves the pupillary block, and uh, there is a positive relationship between the IOP reduction and the preoperative lens uh, vault measured by the ASOCT. 
The mechanism is much less known in open angle glaucoma, but there are several hypotheses to suggest some of the mechanism by which the reduction in the intraocular pressure happens in open angle glaucoma. Now, let's look into the diagnostics, and uh, there is evidence from this study from India that the increase in the RNLF thickness after the cataract surgery, which is more pronounced in the inferior quadrant, which is more affected in the glaucoma. So what it does suggest that we may need to establish a new baseline after cataract surgery uh, with regard to the OCT. There is more evidence to suggest that the effect is not only limited to a spectral domain, but also the time domain OCT. So for both the types of OCT, there is a significant impact of cataract on the OCT reading. Let's look into the visual field, and I think Dr. Mathur already alluded to the effect of uh, cataract on the various parameters in the visual field. This study uh, suggested that the effect is more on the mean deviation and the, both on the mean deviation, pattern standard deviation, and perhaps the VFI is a better index of measuring uh, glaucoma progression in, uh, in a patient with cataract and glaucoma. But there was another study which suggests that, you know, from UK, we suggested that the, the effect is more is with the mean deviation, and you can pretty much safely use pattern standard deviation uh, for the progression. But we need some further studies to find out what are the robust perimetric measure. But what we definitely need to know is we need to reestablish the baseline after cataract surgery with regard to the visual field uh, for our glaucoma patient. Now, so there are clear advantages of uh, thinking about cataract surgery. I'm not a huge fan of combined surgery because I feel the combined surgery, the chances of failure are much, much more higher uh, despite using mitomycin. So you have to look into individual cases and see whether you can do the cataract surgery before the trabeculectomy. It may help to reduce the intraocular pressure with a sufficient that you may wish to postpone the trabeculectomy or you may need to re-establish the baseline with regard to the diagnostic test. The pseudophakic eyes, we all know, have a less risk of lens cornea touch if there is a hypotony. Just going back to the previous slide. And some people may avoid iridectomy if patients are on aspirin or any anticoagulant to decrease risk of high femur. We all know that the cataract surgery after trabeculectomy can lead to trabeculectomy failure, and that is also avoided if you do the cataract surgery before trabeculectomy on, in some of these patients. We all know, and I can see a lot of buzz about the mix. Now, I have been using mix for the last four years, and I think this may be uh, something short-lasted. Uh, we started with eye stents and all this thing. Now we are moved to hydrus, pressure flow, Omni, and again, I think the effect may be a short lasting. But again, that's another advantage of uh, the mix, and the, most of these are combined with the cataract surgery, and we don't know whether the effect is mainly because of the cataract surgery or the additional mix device, something to look into in future. So just some tips about cataract surgery and advanced glaucoma. Carefully consider if the glaucoma is really advanced, then the priority is trabeculectomy, and do the trabeculectomy first. I prefer to use only aspheric monofocal in advanced glaucoma patient and avoid multifocals and premium lenses. Again, it's all about managing patient expectation. Remove viscoelastic, beware of a steroid response and a close follow-up. So again, what is the ideal glaucoma surgery? We are still in search of the ideal glaucoma surgery, but these are some of the characteristics. And perhaps the cataract surgery lives up to the most of them, but it doesn't reduce the pressure to 10 millimeter. Is cataract surgery is one of the commonest glaucoma procedure? So again, the take-home message from this talk, Monday when you all go to your clinic, consider the role of cataract in your glaucoma patient. May, you may want to think about the visual field and OCT and think is there real progression or is there is a cataract. Consider cataract surgery in angle closure and serial exfoliation as a first-line treatment if the pressure is still high. Open angle glaucoma, look into individual cases and see whether you can offer some of the mixed devices in some of these patients. But it's all about managing risk and expectation. Thank you. Well, that was a very comprehensive outlook on cataract extraction and glaucoma, but I thought, you know, you spoke about the EGLE trial where it was a clear lens extraction and we don't consider clear lens to be cataract at all. And there's a lot of controversy on whether you should do a clear lens extraction at all. But otherwise, I think, yes, we look at the, uh, you know, other parameters. We look at the lens walls, basically. And in open angle glaucomas, I think very clearly the old studies have
as soon as that you get a pressure reduction, it lasts for only around three years, and you can't be sort of, you know, misguided into thinking that doing a cataract extraction is going to look after our glaucoma. So you can do a cataract because a cataract is required to come out, not because you want the pressure to come down because of the cataract extraction. I appreciate that you want to look at your visual fields and your institute parameters in a much better light, but then, uh, you know, it, it has its own role to play with the cataract extraction. It's not a very simple surgery. It comes with its own baggage of complications. Uh, however, you were very, very explicit and very clear on you know, how cataract extraction can be therapeutic in glaucoma. Thank you very much. Thank you.